Hello and welcome to Expedition Homestead, the channel where we build your passion for growing through simple yet effective and affordable means of increasing your harvest and also bringing more beauty to your gardens at home. In today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of brand new raised garden beds that we got in this area here. This is our flower garden, and I'm gonna show you how we're filling them up for zero money whatsoever. And while even though this isn't the correct way to fill your raised garden beds, I think it is definitely the best. But per usual, before we start here, we've gotta feed the chickens because they're out here croaking and moaning because I haven't fed them their daily dose of weeds yet. So I'll show you how I do that and then we're gonna hop over to the raised garden beds. Just going to come through a random spot in the garden where we've got some extra weeds growing. And I'm just gonna pick these up, all the soil and roots included, whatever comes with it, awesome. Um, these include dandelion weeds, there's some thistle in there, some wood violets, some uh, wild lettuce, uh, anything. Basically, I throw all of this stuff to the chickens. So we're just gonna go through and multitask. We got free nutritional food for the chickens and we're also able to feed them at the same time, building up a nice layer of compost on the soil as well. So actually we're doing three tasks in one creating compost, feeding the chickens, and weeding the garden. Who knew gardening could be so simple? They love all of those backyard weed greens that we pick so much they even fight over them. Plus they're very high in nutrition, so extremely good for producing some nice and healthy eggs at home. If you're new to the channel, first off, I welcome you and encourage you to subscribe. And also, throughout watching these videos here on the channel, you're gonna realize that I basically establish unconventional ways that you might have never heard of before to reduce labor and time that we have to spend in our garden while still creating an immense amount of beauty, bountiful harvest at the same time, an ecosystem of plants that are working well together. We've got a good source of fungi, bacteria, high nutrition in the soil, all of this kind of stuff we establish in both our vegetable gardens and in our beautiful flowers like you see over here with our gorgeous dahlias that have grown from seed, our oak trees, our fruit trees, our willow trees and pear trees alike. We use and implement all sorts of different methods that simplify the entire process for you because I know if something like this is going to take us hours each day to maintain, um, and if you're new to the garden, you haven't seen our vegetable beds yet, we'll get to that later in the video. But if I can't maintain all of this with just about half an hour every single day or every other day, then I know a lot of you are not going to be able to do it either because we live busy lives. There's no way around it. Um, especially in today's day and age, there is people reaching us and contacting us through our phones, emails, even letters every once in a while. We get all that junk mail that we have to sift through. There's all sorts of entertainment distracting us, all kinds of things that take away our time in the garden. So it's just not applicable to a lot of your lives. So I wanna make sure that I simplify that for you. And our raised garden beds that we're producing is a perfect example of that. We got two brand new beds in addition to the one that we got a couple of weeks ago. I am so excited for them. These are Vajija uh, garden beds. They come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. You can make them into squares. You can make them long and skinny like we did in our scenario. Uh, you can make them into an L, all sorts of things. They're very, very durable. These things will probably last uh, like 30 years here in the garden. So you can get a lot of use out of them. And that is why I think the way that we're gonna show you how to fill them, while it might not be the correct way to do it, I think it is in the long run, the best way for us and the best way to establish a nice 
really strong uh, living soil in that raised garden beds. By the way, we have the links to these down below for 10% off uh, with our special coupon code. It's in the description down below. With that being said, let's take a look at this bed because something special happened to this one after we filled it up. We filled it with all sorts of logs, branches, twigs, wood chips, and then compost up in the top. And I was talking in our original video that I might have to put cover crops over this whole thing. The point of the cover crops was to start breaking down this stuff a little bit faster, to start fixing nitrogen into the soil, and basically just to turbocharge the life that was gonna be created in the soil. But since we used our pure compost that had been sitting over there for a year, something really special happened here. We have got a ton of vegetable seeds and weed seeds popping up all over the place that is doing the job for me. So I, I didn't even have to plant any cover crops in here. If we look at all of the seeds, there's a couple of them that I do want to make sure do not reproduce in here or spread, but we can utilize this in a manner that it's going to create the soil that we want to. We have lambs quarters seeds all over the place. We've got a couple of grass seeds that I will be picking out because I don't want any of that growing right here. Um, it's not like a winter ryegrass or something that I know I can control. I'm not sure what it is, so I'm gonna get it out of there. Then there's also these mallow plants in here. I will let them grow until they get a little bit larger, but I do not want them to go to seed. One thing that I'm not too worried about here, and in fact, I am delightfully surprised because we will get our own harvest off of these, is these little lamb's quarters seeds. Lamb's quarters are very nutritional. They're in the same family as spinach. They're considered a weed, but they are very, very beneficial to your health and beneficial to your garden as well. They're a, a great cover crop in my opinion. They grow very easily and also the roots, while the plants are small, if you keep your plants about under you know, five inches, six inches, and then pull them after that point for harvesting, uh, using in the kitchen or even feeding to your chicken and livestock if you have that. Um, if you pick them once they get above that point, awesome. But up until they get to about five inches, just keep them in your garden let them grow because you're producing a crop for free and it's highly nutritional food for you and your animals as well. And it's going to be feeding the soil, um, building up the sort of microbe system that we want to have alive in here before we plant it out next year. We also have uh, some squash seeds, probably likely uh, acorn squash or zucchini squash. Although these squash will be producing mutant squash species instead of the true squash, I still might be able to get a harvest out of these. And I'm also going to be establishing root systems in the soil. That's gonna be helping create the microbial system that we want. It's gonna help break down the wood chips, the compost, the soil in this area, building life. And then later on in the season, when we chop this all down, and till it into the soil, it's gonna be adding more and more organic material, which is what we need before planting in this next year. So this situation right here is, in my opinion, the very best thing that could have possibly happened. This was a complete win, in my opinion, and it cost us a total of zero dollars to fill also. So if you haven't watched the video yet, I will have a link down in the description below of how we filled this raised bed. I think it is the way to go for you sitting at home wondering how you can fill your raised beds or how we filled it, and also how to create some nice, valuable, nutritional living soil for our plants. So back to these Vegeta grow beds, I am very excited to implement the same sort of methods when filling these right now. Plus we also have a fire pit that we're gonna be digging out in the backyard. So we're gonna simply use up that soil from that area and fill it up in here. All of this to say that filling up garden beds doesn't have to cost you $400 to do, and you can still produce a nice living soil that's gonna give your plants exactly what it needs. There are all kinds of materials that we can use to fill these garden beds. We don't have to go out to the hardware store and just buy gardening soil. If you would want to, that's a totally fine 
route with you. But the reason why I think the methods that we're using are going to be a little bit better in the long run even than going out and spending hundreds of dollars is that we've got all of this incredible organic material that is breaking down in a Hugo culture type of manner. So the logs, twigs, branches, and wood chips that we have in the bottom half of these garden beds are essentially providing a base for fungus and bacteria to grow and establish in the soil which then over time is going to be creating a transport system, if you will, for all the nutrients and our plants. Everything in this whole system works together. We have an incredible creator. Our God had built all of these systems for us to follow and to work with. If we work against these systems, we're gonna have a hard time producing incredible fruit harvest that we want. If you've ever had a vegetable that's been fed with just chemically derived triple 13 or 10 10 10 this fertilizer that is produced in massive quantities through chemicals if you've ever had fruit and vegetables produced with that stuff compared to fruit and vegetables alongside it that have been fed with compost manure all kinds of things all of this stuff that's breaking down into organic material into the soil if you've ever tasted that compared to chemically derived fruit, I tell you what, th there's no way around it. It's different. That type of fruit and veg produces different. It tastes different. It's got a different sort of vibrational frequency to it because of how it's been growing in conjunction with nature and how things are supposed to be in the garden. It's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. Just like how we're turning weeds into food for the family through nutritionally dense eggs that the chickens provide us while at the same time producing compost for the garden, we can also implement things like filling up our raised garden beds with all of this stuff as a way to include several different mechanisms into a system that's working for us. Throughout the entirety of our backyard gardens, including our vegetable gardens and our flower gardens, we have very little input to the system because a lot of what we create through growing the fruits and vegetables, it's going to be turned back into the soil and turned back into compost providing nutrition for all of the stuff that we produce. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Throughout the entire process of breaking down our vegetable matter and all of our clippings, our weeds, our compost from the chickens, the manure from the chickens, throughout the process that the microbes and bacteria and fungi uh, take place, everything that happens there that process turns all of the excess material that is produced from our garden into valuable nutrients, basically almost everything that our plants need to thrive and flourish throughout the seasons. So that is how you simplify gardening. Now, an update on this beautiful flower garden that we just created several weeks ago using a ton of free wood chips from the village and you can do this in your own town as well. Just call them up and see if they do a chip drop. It is an incredible way to build a base for the soil and also it's gonna snuff out a lot of weeds that might cause a problem later in the garden. So let's take a look at our dahlias here specifically in this video. We topped a lot of these dahlias and pinched them off so they are doing at this point exactly what we want them to do. See how we've got many main branches coming off so it's not just one big one in the center. You can do that if you want to, but I wanna get lots more blooms from them than I would have otherwise. So that's why we do the pinching method and it works out great. We have that video on our channel as well so you can go ahead and search for it if that's something that you're interested in implementing in your garden. And we've got a few beautiful dahlias in bloom right now. These ones specifically right here were grown from seed and I really, really do love the way that they look. If you don't know, if you grow dahlia from seed, they're not gonna come out as the true dahlia, but these ones, even though it was a, a random 
random surprise on what they would look like. I think they came out gorgeous. So we'll probably keep the tubers from them and preserve them over winter and see what sort of varieties we can produce over the years uh, with the seeds from these ones. Our flower planters that we created are doing really well. The willow trees that we planted in here and then we've got some tomatoes growing in buckets right over there as well so we can get some veg from this area too. Over time we will be filling up the space with more and more flowers more and more dahlias, gladiolas, and all kinds of things that we can create interesting videos for you. So very excited for it. We've got some beautiful sunflowers growing that are about to put off blooms. So the heads are starting to develop on these. Not quite these Pikes Peak ones yet, but uh, right here, gorgeous. They are doing very well. But um, I was pleasantly surprised with the size of our elderberry blooms. I'm big. Whoa, look at that. So much fruit is gonna be produced just off of those blooms back here. So very happy to uh, be able to provide you with some great elderberry content this year. It looks like we're going to have a ton of them to produce. We've got, um, I think, seven more plants besides this one growing, so we're going to have a ton of them. Lots of videos on showing you how to preserve them and keep the birds from eating them, how to make the elderberry syrup, all kinds of stuff coming out on those. And then back here, our cucumber plants are producing nice and happy as well. Um, they're it's finally starting to take off. Some of them are not so happy like that one there, but uh, we are still getting several cucumbers a day because we don't just have these. But we also have this trellis system that we created with this chicken panel and our raised garden bed over here also. Well, God dang it, I could pretty much go all day long sharing stories with you on how we create such an incredible backyard garden with very little labor and almost no cost whatsoever besides the raised garden beds with which uh, I think I am slowly changing my mind on them. That's for another video in the future though. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Give us a thumbs up and like this video if you enjoyed the content, found it entertaining, and hopefully even learned a little bit. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy gardening friends.